Shalom. Um, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem El Shai Bashem And double honors to the apostles and elders of, of Great Millstone. And Shalom to all the hopeful elect brothers that are all around the world doing the work of the Lord. Uh, so, prophesying and uplifting the name of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Now, the topic of this lesson will be the 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 humility of David, because David was an was an was and is a good example of someone that's humble. You know, someone that's a. a lowly, you know, someone that's meek, but David was also, you know, a warrior, a prophet, a poet, you know, David was many things, he, you know, he was a, 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 a after the most high, after the most high, after the most high's own heart. So the Most High loved David, and when he went off, you know, when when he committed adultery and murder, you know, the Lord didn't uh, the Lord didn't put him to death, but he did catch hell for it. You know, he did go through hell for his sins, but but the Most High didn't have him, you know, get put to death. Now, now this is a. Uh, now this is the f first example of David showing humility, and it's when um, um, a man was uh, 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 throwing stones, you know, at him. But David was with his mighty men, and and his mighty men, you know, one of them was about to uh, take his head off, but. But David said no, you know, David showed humility, but at that time he was uh, the king of Israel already. You know, he, you know, he could have, you know, put the man to death on the spot, but he didn't. He was humble and he showed humility. Now this is Second Samuel. Chapter 16, in verse, let me start at, start at 8. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 8. Let me start at verse 5, right? 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 5. And when King David came to Baharim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gerah. He came forth and cursed still as he came, which means... As he as he was going towards David, he was uh, uh, cursing him, and he cast stones. He threw stones, and he cast stones at David, and at all the servants of King David, and all and all the people, and all the mighty men were on his right hand. And on his left, David's men were with him at the time that this man was throwing stones at them. And this man was of the house of Saul. And thus said, 
Shimei when he cursed. Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. He's calling David, you know, a man of the devil. Basically, he's calling him Satan. Um, verse 8. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into thy into the hand of Absalom thy son, and behold thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. So all these things you know that he was saying you know he was a uh, uh, he was he was a uh, cursing you know David out for you know for for uh uh, he was saying that all these things are happening to you because you know because of what happened to Saul and 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 then you uh, uh, took Saul's place as the king of Israel and then the Lord uh, is delivering the your kingdom into your son's hand which was Absalom and thou art taken in thy mischief, thou art a bloody man. But verse nine says, "Then, Ab then said, then said Abishai the son of Zer the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go go over there, and I pray thee, and take his head off." So, so Abishai was one of David's uh, hot men, and you know he wasn't having it. He's like, you know, I'm gonna go over there and take his head off. You know, why is he saying all this to you? And David, once again, is the king of Israel, and he had this dude you know, coming out of nowhere, throwing stones at him, right? So I'm pretty sure Abishai was heated. He's like, let me do it. Verse 10, and the king said, what, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, the Lord hath said unto him, curse David. Who shall then say, who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? So David is telling Abishai, you know, the Lord put it in his spirit for him to do this, for him to do this to me. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seek my life. How much more now this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. So the, David is telling Abishai that the Lord is putting the spirit in him to, to, to do this to me right now. Just leave him alone. It, it may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will requite me good of his cursing this day. So, so let him do it because the Lord might, you know, look at my affliction and, and require me good of his cursing for this day. You know, you know, maybe the Lord will, uh, look at what I'm going through and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, uh, bless me, you know, for the hell that I'm going through. And David, and as David and his men went by the way. Shimei went along the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. So he didn't stop. So he just kept on going right as they were walking along. And the king and all the people that were with him came, we came weary and refreshed themselves there. So that's, that's one example of David showing ultra humility because 
king. For one, he's a king of Israel. And then he had his mighty men there with him. So he could have easily, from the start, you know, um, allowed Abishai to go over there and take his head off right then and there. But David was like, no, you know, the Lord is, the Lord, the Lord is doing this to me right now. So that's, 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 that's David being humble, like super humble, right? And, you know, we should look at this as a, as a sign that, you know, it's always good to be humble because the Lord, the Lord's going to, the Lord's going to defend you for one. You, you know, you're not supposed to avenge yourself. And also, the Lord um, likes, you know, humility. Now, now another example of David showing humility is when he had the chance to take revenge on Saul, right? Because Saul was after him. Um, you know, Saul got jealous of David and, and then all those demons and evil spirits came upon Saul and he tried to kill David multiple times. But David, David, uh, David got out of those situations alive because the, the Most High was dealing with David. And this is 1 Samuel chapter 24, chapter 24 and verse 5. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. So Saul went to the cave, you know, was looking for David. And then him and his men fell asleep. But David had the chance to get revenge right there, him and his men. And David showed that by cutting off a piece of his uh of his of his of his of his of his, of his garment of of Saul's garment, All right? And he said unto his men, "The Lord, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, unto my master, Satan." Unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David still, uh, still had a respect and love for Saul, even though he was trying to kill him for no reason. Because David defended Saul and defended Israel against the Philistines and he won many many wars against other nations you know and Saul was there witnessing all of it but Saul had evil spirits on him because he disobeyed the Lord so David took his spirit so, so, like, so the Most High took his spirit from Saul because the kingdom was going to be transferred from Saul to David right so David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. So David, uh, David told his servants, don't, don't rise against Saul. Don't go up against him. Um, verse 8. Let me go down to verse 10. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that how that the Lord hath delivered the thee today into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me to kill thee. So 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 some of the people, some of my servants that was with me was telling me, yo, get him. But mine eye spared thee, and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord. So David still reverenced Saul. He still had love and respect for Saul. For he is the Lord's anointed. 
because uh, Samuel uh, Samuel anointed Saul to be king right but the real king the true king of Israel was was King David moreover my father see yeah see the skirt of thy of thy robe in my hand for in that I cut off the cut off the skirt skirt of thy robe and kill thee not so I didn't kill you I just I just saw uh, cut off a piece of your garment but I could have killed you know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand so there is neither evil nor sin in my hand I didn't murder I, I didn't kill you even though you're after me even though you're trying to kill me and I have not sinned against thee yet thou hauntest my soul to take it so I'm run, running away from you and the Lord delivered you into mine hand and I could have got revenge but I didn't but yet you're still hunting me you're still after me the Lord judge between me and thee and the Lord avenge me of thee but mine hand shall not be upon thee so the Lord is going to judge the situation the Most High is going to judge you for hunting me and trying to kill me but I'm not going to sin I'm not going to sin and take your life so that's another example of of David showing ultra ultra humility like ultra super ultra humility right David was was a was the most humble man you know so now let's get Psalms chapter 1 138 and 6 Psalms chapter 148 verse 6 let me, I'll, let me highlight this. Though the Lord be high, because he's the most high, he's, he's the highest being in existence. And under him is his son, Yahushai. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off, because the most high hates pride, but he shows respect unto the lowly. Because... There's no one higher than the Most High, so why why are you proud? Right? So the Most High has respect unto the lowly and unto the meek. And this is uh, Psalms chapter 147 and, and 6. Psalm chapter 147 and verse 6. The Lord lift, lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. So the wicked is going to get cast down to the ground, but he lifted up the meek. Now let's go into that word meek. Right? The word meek Anya, is poor, humble, afflicted. Meek. Are we from depressed, uh, or figuratively in mind or circumstances, needy, especially saintly, humble. So the word meek goes back to humble. So the Lord lifted up the meek, which means humble. He casted the wicked down to the ground. And the wicked, uh, the Most High, uh, gave the earth into the hand of the wicked. Now, who, who, who rules the world right now? And be honest with yourself if you're, if you're hearing this video. Which, what nation of people rule the earth right now? And is ruling the earth, you know, in complete wickedness. That's the so-called white man, which is a nation of Edom, starting with the, with the banking families, right? He's, he is the wicked. And the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you are the meek. You are the righteous. But Yahweh Shai, our Lord, when he comes back, will only deliver the elect. And two-thirds 
of our people will be destroyed. <clears throat> this is Psalms chapter 37 and 11. Psalms chapter 37 and 11, right? But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The meek, which is the nation of Israel, which, which the elect will be delivered, right? Two thirds will be destroyed. The meek will inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace because Yahweh Shai, one of his titles is a prince of peace. He brought peace between 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 Israel and the Most High. And also when he comes back and uh, destroys the nations, starting with the so-called white man, the Edomites, out of rulership, once he takes them out of power and puts all the other nations in captivity, there will be peace on earth forever. Like, there's not going to be any more wars anymore, any more none of that. No more world wars, no more of nothing. There's going to be complete peace on earth, you know. In his reign, and Yahweh is going to reign forever. It's not going to be this this Edomite coming up and revolting against Yahweh Shai or, or or Israel. No, there's not going to be any of that. It's not going to be no Moabites doing none of that. It's just going to be the nation of Israel on top, peace forever, and the nations in captivity, right? Uh, the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Ishmaelites. Uh, so-called white man, Chinese, Japanese, so-called Arabs, the Hamites, the Africans, they're all going into captivity, right? Slavery under Yahweh Shai and the elect of Israel. <clears throat> they're going to be our servants and our slaves, right? Now, this is Psalms chapter 34 and 18. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are, of, are, that are of a broken heart, and saveth such to be of, saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So the Lord is near unto them of a broken heart, and our hearts are broken. Like, as a people, as a nation of people, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we are broken hearted and destroyed because we're under the curses because we sinned against the Lord and we're in captivity still even though we don't have chains on us we're still in slavery we still get murdered by by the so-called white man and nothing comes out of it when it goes to court like nothing comes out of it right but it's a sign that we're it's a sign that we're Israelites right and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Now, contrite, contrite, dust, crushed, literally powder or figuratively contrite, right? To be crushed, to be contrite. To crumble, transit to bruise literally, physically, destroy, humble, oppress. So we are, we are, uh, we are, we are oppressed, right? We are the oppressed people. We are the poor. We are, we are, we're, we're low. We're the uh, lowest of people on earth right now. You know, everyone's racist against us. Everybody hates us but 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 they but they but they love to worship us at, at the same time because we're the children children of the most high so they hate us and they love us at the same time right weird now this is psalms chapter 51 And Psalm chapter 51 
and verse let's see ten. No, verse one. Psalm chapter fifty-one and verse one. Uh, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. That's uh, that's uh, Uriah the Hittite's wife, right? That uh, David, uh, David got assassinated. David got murdered. Have mercy upon me, O Most High, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So he's praying and begging to the Most High to show and have mercy upon him because, because he sinned against the Lord. You know, he, 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 he committed murder and adultery, right? And those are two major sins. And you're supposed to be put to death for either of those. So he's praying to the Most High, have mercy upon me and blot out my transgressions. Blot out my sins. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. So uh, 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 lean my heart, which is mind, and renew my spirit renew a right spirit in me you know uh, 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 pur 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 purge this filth from my spirit you know so that I may, might be right again you know re renew my mind Lord please you know cast me not away from thy presence and take and take not thy Holy Spirit from me so this is a very important scripture for brothers in the truth because uh Anything could happen because we don't know if we're part of the elect. So this is a very important scripture that's taught unto us by our, by our apostles and elders to always remember. Cast me not away from thy presence. Lord, don't, don't take me away out of your sight. Don't take me away out of your presence. Don't take the truth away from me. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't take the understanding and, and then don't take the, the, the knowledge and understanding of the scriptures and the wisdom that I that that I've gained from from you putting me through all this experience and the truth from me. Please, please. Baba Kasha is how I say please in the ancient Hebrew. Baba Kasha. Right? Take cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Hello. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and hup, 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 uphold me with thy free spirit. And, and you know, that's, that's the end of the lesson. Wait, one more verse. Then will I teach transgressors, transgressors which is sinners, thy ways, and, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. So... So, so after, after the Lord grants mercy and forgives, and forgives me of my sin, then I will go and teach others, and that's that's how, that's how brother the, brothers in the truth are, because the Lord showed them mercy and took them out of the world, and now they're in the truth, and now they're teaching others to repent. Hey, I was in the world, I was going off, I was sinning. But you gotta repent, because because the Lord is coming back, and, he's, and this place is gonna be destroyed. That's that's the end of the lesson. Uh, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.